This is a Briggs & Stratton Quantum Carburetor, part number 799868 and 498170. This fits all Quantum engines without a choke and the type of prime is the push button prime. In this video we're going to go through how to dismantle, clean and reassemble this carburetor. This is a very simple carburetor. It has just one throttle plate, no choke and one main fixed jet in the center of the Venturi. So one of the reasons we're going to clean a carburetor is if the engine won't start or is very hard to start, very reluctant to start, the engine bogs down while under load or just lacks performance overall. Um, it's normally always related to the uh, to the carburetor. Normally you could have a bit of dirt um, or parts have worn out. So we'll go through the cleaning and dismantling of this carburetor today. So if you've never taken apart a carburetor before, it's very important that you keep track of all the parts that come out and the order in which they came out. With this one, not so much. It's a very simple carburetor, but I've just got a bit of paper there that we're just going to lay the parts out when we take it apart. The first thing we're going to do is remove this bottom cover uh, retaining bolt, which holds the float bowl on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the carburetor over to reveal this plug on the bottom, which holds the float bowl on. I've already slackened it off, so we'll just take it off by hand. And once removed, you'll notice there's a little washer there as well. So we'll put the carburetor to one side. We'll remove the, the little felt washer off the plug. We'll, re we'll replace this part in a service kit. And on the bottom here, we've got the, we've got the plug, which if you notice, there's a small drilling on the side and in the top. Now this is the main fuel jet which delivers fuel to the air jet which goes inside the Venturi. Now, nine times out of ten, this can be blocked if you've got problems with the carburetor. And we'll go through the cleaning process of this now. So there's a few different ways of cleaning it. You could just use carb cleaner with a little nozzle straw, like the plastic nozzle, and just blast into the hole there and on top to clear it. You could use compressed air, or, you, or you could use a little rod, or a combination of all three. And you're just clearing out the small holes. I mean, these holes are very finely drilled. Don't go try and force anything that's not designed to go in the hole because let's say, the, these holes are designed specifically for this carburetor. And if you start making the holes bigger, you'll get bad. You'll, you'll get more fuel delivery, but at the same time, you'll get bad performance because the fuel's then too rich. So just just rod them through ever so like that, and then give it a, give it a blast with some carb cleaner. You should be able to see. Uh, all the way through. You could, if you put your mouth on there, you could blow through. If you can blow through it, it's pretty much clean, but you do really need to ensure that that is sparkling by the end of uh, cleaning it, because as you can see, the, the hole is so fine on there. And with this carburetor, we've only got one one um, main jet there, so if that gets fouled, the engine's not going to run. So we'll put that to one side, and we'll move on to the next step. So now we've got that bottom plug off, we can remove the float bowl. As you can see, this is a this is a clean carburetor. There's no dirt in there at all. You would expect to see. Well, you'd have your fuel in there, but with that plug out, you would have drained the fuel would have drained out. Uh, if you've got any dirt in there, give that a good clean, and put it to one side. And the next thing we've got is we've got the float. So we'll go ahead and remove the float now. So to remove the float, we've just got a small pin there that we can push out and remove the small pin. The pin goes through these two upright supports here and then through the plastic part of the float. So we'll put that to one side. We can lift out the float carefully as we've got the, the needle underneath. The needle can just be slid out. It's just in a little groove, like a little track. Slid out and we'll inspect these now. So with the parts out, we'll inspect the float first. This is a plastic float. Um, so the older ones were made of brass, but th these plastic ones tend to hold up all right. We're just looking for any damage, any cracks, or any fluid ingress that could alter the float level. This one is perfect, so we'll put it to one side. Now we'll move on to the inlet needle, and we'll have a, look, a closer look at that. So we'll look at the needle now, the inlet needle for the, uh, the float body. And what we're looking for is on the tip of the needle, it's rubberized to the shoulder and we're looking to make sure that there's still a point on the end that it hasn't worn worn rounded 
and that there's rubber all the way around and no exposed metal in the rubber section. This one's perfect, so we'll put it to one side and we'll move on to the next part. So we're going to move on to the inside of the carburetor now and we've got a small gasket which we'll remove, which, which is sealing the, the float bowl. This will be replaced in any service kit. So we're going to inspect the fuel inlet needle seat now and that's this brass bit inside of here between these two ears where the float bowl is held on. The fuel comes in through this brass tube here and exits through there. Now the seat of the needle pushes up against there with the float when the level of the fuel rises. So there's always the same amount of fuel theoretically in the, in the float bowl. What we're looking for is any dirt or debris that's built up around that seat which will prevent the rubber needle from seating properly. Now you can clean it with the, with the rod, some carb cleaner or some compressed air. Um, but just make sure that it's nice and clean and there's no pitting or anything like that. So we'll move on to the main jet now. The main jet is that brass bit which sits within this tube here. This one's pressed in. Um, it takes substantial force to remove this one so we're not going to remove it. Um, but again, rod it through, varying the size up to where you feel a small amount of resistance. Rod that up and down and you can see there in the throat of the Venturi the rod coming through. We're just going to clean that out. It's quite a big bore on that one compared to the the other in, um, like the main jet's orifice. Um, but yeah, we're just making sure that that's clean. So a bit of carb cleaner, compressed air, rod that through and we should be good to go. Now on the front face of the carburetor, we've got three small holes. This one on the left is for the priming unit. When you press the primer, uh, air is injected through there. And we've got two other orifices on the left and right here. Now these generally just have air running through them, so you can't really rod them through because this one on the left is far too fine. The one on the right you could, but they're drilled passages, so they run along and then they're drilled through, so you've got a brass plug there. Um, so you can't really drill through them, but as air is only running through them, they should be fairly clean, but you could spray a bit of carb cleaner through there or compressed air, but nine times out of 10, they are fine. Like I said, this, this carburetor is a fixed jet. There's no tuning involved to it. It's basically straight out of the box, ready to go. There's no, um, there's no idle fuel settings or anything like that. It's literally what you see is what you get and you've got the throttle plate on the back there. So I suppose one of the last things we can check, we can just check this throttle plate here. Just check that it moves freely, it's not getting bound up, anything like that, and that it seals all the way around at idle. You have got a small cut out there for the idle air to flow through. But like I say, this is a simple carburetor, so there's nothing really to check apart from just making sure that it's squeaky clean inside there. Once you've done all that, we'll go ahead and reassemble it. So for reassembly, it's very easy. So we take our float and our inlet needle, and we just slide it over there. Invert it, so you can see the needle there, and we just put it into the seat. Then we take the pin, and we can run the pin through. both those supports there through the float so there we are so that's the the carb empty of fuel and as the fuel rises the float comes up and that needle will then seat on that seat and stop the fuel coming in if you wanted to test this to make sure it was seating properly just lightly press up on the float and blow through there. You shouldn't be able to blow through. If you can blow through without restriction, then you've got wear on either the seat or the needle. Now we'll fit the O-ring, which just drops over the top there and it sits into a little grooved recess around the perimeter. Then the float bowl sits over the top. Like I said, it's a, it's a very simple carburetor. We've then got the felt washer and then we have the main jet, which retains everything together. And that just screws straight in. And that's it. That's how you dismantle, clean, and reassemble the Briggs & Stratton Quantum Carburetor. So in that video, I hope, you've, I hope you enjoyed watching it and you might have been able to follow along at home. 
please like and subscribe if you haven't already and thanks for watching